PC Perspective's coverage of CES 2016 is brought to you by Logitech. See the latest gaming peripherals at gaming.logitech.com. Hey everyone, PC Perspective here at CES 2016, uh, and we just got back from the NVIDIA suite over at the uh, Wynn Resort and Hotel, uh, and uh, we want to do our, our quick video overview of what we saw there, um, because a lot of it was not stuff that we can write about or show pictures of. So first thing, get this out of the way, they had no news on GPU technology. They weren't talking about Pascal, they weren't talking about FinFET technology, they weren't talking about anything to do with discrete graphics uh, in terms of new products at all. So people who were excited about, hey, AMD talked about Polaris this week, maybe NVIDIA talked about Pascal, the answer is uh, no, and no, not at all. Uh, they did talk a little bit about an update to the Shield TV device. Um, basically, they're gonna have an update for Marshmallow. They didn't really talk about when, I guess? Yeah, I don't think they really have a solid date. Next couple weeks, I think they said. Yeah, and, and, the, and the majority of the changes are uh, Android based, not Nvidia based. So you can do combined storage with the internal storage and an SD card and it looks like one volume. Um, what else did they change? You could uh, modify the home screen on Android TV, which was something you couldn't do before. Minor things like that uh, were, were added to it, but no price changes, no new specs, nothing kind of out of you know expectation there. What they did talk about was VR. And uh, Ken and I were talking about this on the walk back. It's like they didn't really, like they don't have any new products for VR. They don't have any new brands necessarily. Um, but they want to be associated with VR at every possible entrance, right? So they created, uh, what was the name of that program? VR Ready. VR, VR Ready. And it's like a branding program essentially for any PC or notebook that meets a minimum specification um, that is essentially the same as what the Oculus minimum yeah. specification is for hardware. So it's like a 970, uh, GTX 970. Uh, 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 GTX 970, Core i5, 8 gigs of RAM, certain uh, amount of USB 3. Yeah, we're like three USB yeah. 3.0 ports and one USB 2.0 port, whatever. Um, and then uh, they showed us some, so anyway, the, with the VR Ready, they're gonna have like system builders that they partner with that are gonna have it uh, and that type of stuff as well as you'll be able to buy discrete cards if you wanna build it your own. Then we did some demos. Uh, and this is the first time that I think either of us had had hands-on with Oculus Connect. Is that what it's called? The controller Oculus set? Touch. Okay, I think it's Oculus Connect. But it's the one with the controllers where it's, we, got to, we got to see and use the final design yeah. of the headset, which is nice. Um, and then use the controllers. We both played uh, Bullet Train, which was an epic demo uh, built by Epic. Not necessarily that it was fantastic, but it was actually really, really cool. Um, and they, they did some interesting things, right? So you're, you're standing up, you're moving around in a 3D space, more just rotating in the 3D space. Yeah, you're just kind of looking around and strafing maybe, but not, not really walking around the room at all. It, it, it didn't track your walking movement at all. Uh, they, they solved the motion problem by doing um, teleportation. Yeah. So one of the buttons on the controllers you hold down and there are key points that you can teleport to and that's how you move between them. And then once you move to the new spot, you can rotate and look at the enemies uh, accordingly. And then in terms of game dynamics, um, you know, you teleport to an area that had a handgun on a pedestal, you reach down and you're using uh, like this part of your hand, like you squeeze it like you're picking something up yeah. and it, shows up as being in your hand. Uh, and then you use these two parts to shoot the trigger mm -hmm. and it worked. And one of the things I found was I just, typical game player holding it up and trying to shoot, but realized eventually that I would have much better aim if I actually aimed down the sights. Like if I hold the controller up, higher up in my head as opposed to down here, all of a sudden I could see what I was looking at. What did you think about like the shooting mechanic of it? I, I thought it was really good. I actually kind of didn't, I don't think I got to the point where I was sort of holding it up. I, I didn't mentally reach that point yet because yeah. it was like a five to seven minute demo or something like that. But it felt really intuitive with those controllers, just kind of like picking up a gun. So the, they teach you with pistols and then they just throw a rifle at you and you figure out, oh, I need to use both hands to pick it up this time. Just kind of how it would lie normally. Yeah, if you just pick it up with one hand, you can't really do anything with it. If you pick it up with the second one, now all of a sudden you can aim and point. They had a shotgun, they had a rifle. Uh, it was pretty cool, and they had like this effect where when you were doing the teleportation, things slowed down. You could like grab a bullet out of the air, and you make a throwing motion towards an enemy, and yeah. you would throw the bullet at the person, and it was pretty satisfying. Uh, then the end boss, like you caught rockets, and you pointed them back at them and uh, they blew up that way. Uh, so that was that was actually pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, and I also did the, uh, I played with the HTC Vive. Um, I guess final hardware, maybe, uh, I guess maybe I not. They've delayed it out hardware, a little yeah. bit. And I did the art demo, um, I think it was just called. It's, it's the Google drawing demo. Yeah, it was, 
way cooler than I expected it to be. Really had no inclination. I'm not an artistic person, but the ability to draw in 3D space, like walk around it, color things differently, you know, change shapes. There's a lot of visual effects you can do. It was actually really, really, really neat. Uh, and then I also did the Everest demo, which is simulating climbing Mount Everest at certain specific points. Um, and you use the two controllers, like uh, there's a part where you're walking across a ladder that is laid uh, on the ground or on is laid horizontally uh, across a cavern, right? And you're walking over it, holding on to two ropes to the side. And you actually have to pull yourself forward a little bit with the ropes of the controllers. And obviously you're looking straight down. And when you look straight down, you see feet and, but a hole all the way through it is, it was very much an unnerving type of thing. And then you climb a ladder a little bit like vertically. That was a little bit less, um, impactful for me yeah, it's, it's kind of weird because you're climbing the ladder with just your hands and you're not getting your feet in it at all of course like it just a, looked like an interesting sensation i don't know how it did it and maybe it was just simulated but when i was walking like to the ladder because like it, when you're walking across the ladder i'm physically moving in this room mm -hmm. um and, and it's really neat so but you need to have space, open space to be able to do that. But as I was walking up to the ladder to climb, which was only like four or five steps, you hear the sound of like foot into snow, like compacting snow, like the crunch sound you get with that. I don't, I didn't like go faster or slower to see if it was monitoring that or anything, uh, but that was pretty neat. Um, the only thing I'll say about that is, uh, other than the, it was really a neat demo, is that it was very bright white, so it was covered in snow. Uh, and that's like the worst case scenario for seeing screen door effect on those types of screens, right? So uh, the pixel uh, deviation or delineations, right, are, are more apparent in Everest than they were with the Art app. And I don't think I saw anything when using the Oculus at all, did you? No, it was a little of a faster pace demo, so we probably weren't paying quite as much attention because things were moving quickly. But yeah, I didn't see any real screen door, no nausea or anything that's all really seems to be fixed with this new VR stuff. Yeah, it's interesting. I did a third demo. It was, it was called Adrift. And it's apparently it's a game coming out later this quarter uh, with the Oculus. And it uses a, uh, an Xbox controller and you use one of the thumbsticks to rotate. And to me, that inst in, in instantly initiated nausea for me, right? The fact that I could turn my head this way, but I could also use my controller to turn that way is a no-go for me. Uh, but the other two demos did, did very well. Um, and, that, and that was pretty much it for what NVIDIA had. Like I said, no GPU technology, no Android device technology. We're going to go to their press conference tonight where they're going to talk about car technology. So we'll see kind of what that turns into, if it's a little bit more um, exciting and uh, energetic than last year's car tech keynote we'll see um but uh for those of you waiting for pascal news you're gonna have to wait a little bit longer thanks guys <laughs>